And now, the Lafayette Food Junkie Show, served up medium rare every Sunday night. Welcome to the Lafayette Food Junkie Show on News Talk 96.5 KPEL. I'm your host, Tiffany Deku. Here we talk about all the food happenings around Acadiana. If you like food, tune in. You might learn something new. Welcome back, guys. A lot of you out there are enjoying a three-day weekend uh, for the Labor Day weekend. I, however, am not. Um, I will be going back to the day job tomorrow. I'm one of the least less fortunate that has to work on Labor Day, but it's okay. I enjoy my day job, so not complaining about it too much. Um, it is also the start of pumpkin spice latte season. We kind of talked about that a little bit on last week's show. I am not a fan of the pumpkin spice latte. However, there are other wonderful pumpkin products out there that I fully support and enjoy pumpkin pie, pumpkin sp- scones, uh, pumpkin bread with chocolate chips in it. Great Harvest does a pumpkin yaya bread that is wonderful. Pumpkin cheesecake and the elusive, as in I've been trying to find it at every supermarket since they kind of previewed that it was coming out again. Ben and Jerry's pumpkin cheesecake ice cream. This is my pumpkin spice latte. This is it for me. It's fall. I'm ready for it. Uh, If any of you out there are listening and you find it at a supermarket around Acadiana, please email me at lafayettefoodjunkie at gmail.com and let me know where you found it because I am on the hunt for the Ben and Jerry's pumpkin cheesecake ice cream. Joining me tonight as guest co-host is Mickey Abair. She is a sommelier in training at Mar- Marcello's Wine Market Cafe. We practiced this before the show. Literally seconds before this. Okay. In <laughs> in excuse, as in an excuse, uh, being the good sommelier in training that she is, she did bring two wines for us to try and we started tr- sampling them before the show. And I told her that last time I had wine... I was slurring by the end of the show. I miss the shows that I used to drink while I was on air. I probably shouldn't be saying that, but it it, did, that was just it makes me slur and stumble <laughs> over my words a little bit more. How how are you on the pumpkin spice latte? Are you for or against? I think it's gross. Yeah. <laughs> just be not it's not, not my favorite. Fan. I feel like if I wanted to drink potpourri, I would just do it. <laughs> It's nice. not my, <laughs> not my cup favorite. of tea. No, not even a little bit. Y'all what about tea. other pumpkin products? I like pumpkin food. Like yeah. pumpkin. Um, I guess I grew up in a house. My mom's Japanese, so we used to fry pumpkin and Ooh. put it in like soba noodles, like tempura style. So yes, I like Please, savory pumpkin. That. Yeah, <laughs> but I don't. I don't like the potpourri pumpkin. <laughs> so instead of pumpkin spice latte season, you're like it's pumpkin soba noodle season. Exactly. I yeah. like the sound of that. <laughs> Hundred percent better. <laughs> nice. And again, have you heard of this pumpkin cheesecake ice cream from Ben and Jerry's? I've had it before, and I've I've eaten a whole pint. And usually, and I make it a point not to eat a whole pint of ice cream in one sitting because I think about it's really bad for you. But some types of ice cream, you just have to do it because it tastes so good. And that was one of them. I mean, if it makes you happy, why stress over it? Right. Just enjoy it. Just enjoy it. I will say I'm not a fan of the pumpkin spice latte, but I am a fan. So I want to say it's probably around Thanksgiving when Starbucks gets the red cups, the holiday season, (laughs) the peppermint mochas, which I drink year round. Uh, You just say, I would like a mocha add mint and it's the same thing. But... I say it's the same thing, but it's really not because they taste worlds better during holiday season. And I don't know what the difference is. Maybe it's a different mint mix. Yeah, well, is it it peppermint versus just regular mint? Maybe so. Maybe that's what it is. Instead of it being peppermint year round, it's mint. So maybe that is the difference. Yeah, because I noticed that I don't like peppermint tea, but I prefer mint tea. So maybe there's something to it. Maybe so. (laughs) Maybe that's it. Maybe we just cracked that (laughs) wide open. A few weeks ago on the show, I mentioned Reggie's Soul Food, which is this food truck right now out front of Uptown Lofts, which is off of Congress in the Fightonville area of Lafayette. And he's getting ready to move into the restaurant space where Acadiana Grilled Cheese was. We went out there today, um, really affordable. We got, on Sundays they do barbecue. We did a sausage plate. And his pictures on Facebook have been driving me bananas. Like there's, <laughs> he's, they're taking really good food photos, 
drool worthy. His hamburgers have been looking great. I, I hate fried catfish. I want to eat fried catfish from the pictures that he's been posting. And then he does barbecue on Sundays. Well, when I got up this morning, I was originally going to get my plate lunch at another well-known place in town. And I saw the macaroni and cheese and I said, no, we are going there. So we went, we got the sausage. It had two sausage, two sausage links, dirty rice. And we got two things of the mac and cheese and the mac and cheese was so good. I judge mac and cheese very heavily at a lot of places <laughs> in town. A lot of places that have the macaroni and cheese. It's not that great. This was really good, and it was seven bucks, so it was it was pretty. For the whole affordable. plate lunch, yeah, that's a deal. Yeah, it went, and it was. We were both. We didn't have to go into a coma because we split it, um, but it was it was really cool. So if you guys go find them on Facebook, it's Reggie's Soul Food, and the pictures are just oh my god, they're so good. Like it's important you eat with your eyes catfish. first. In fact, I was like, ooh, if he has fried catfish today, I really <laughs> want it. And my boyfriend was like, but you hate catfish and I was like I know but I just want it from looking at his pictures like they look so good also um I had wrote a column a while back on restaurants that were located next to laundry mats around town which I think is very important <laughs> especially for someone who doesn't have a washer and dryer at their apartment um to kind of multitask and it makes it a little more enjoyable that while you're doing your laundry you can go get something to eat and lately, we've kind of been putting that into practice. And I've been going to a lot of laundry mats that are next to different restaurants. Well, I wrote about sticks in the article. And I kind of just talked about that they had, you know, typical bar food. What I failed to realize is that on Sundays, they have $3 Bloody Marys. That's and so they cheap. make their only Bloody... Then they make their own Bloody Mary mix. So we went and checked that out today. And it was a it was a really tasty Bloody Mary. I wouldn't say it's the best, but it's a, it was a good Bloody Mary. Do so they do the nice. works? Like all the condiments? Yeah, like, I had the green beans yeah. and the olives. Are you a fan of, of all the, the garden in the Bloody Mary? I do like it because I feel like it's in place of the salad that I'll never eat. Oh, <laughs> nice. Okay. I almost want to tell them not to waste your time putting it in there for me because I just drink the Bloody Mary. Unless they have those crazy out of this world... Like if it's bacon, leave that in there. You please. can leave the bacon. Nobody yeah, ever the bacon, will say that. Yeah. <laughs> eggs, shrimp. If you put any of that crazy stuff, fried chicken. I've seen places that have whole fried chickens in there. Leave it. I mean, that I'm I'm down for that. But the little garnishment, I'm kind of just like I I, I think I'm gonna start telling them that just to leave it. You can save your garden. Well, I like the build your own <laughs> Bloody Mary places because I'll just make it. And then if they have bacon, I'll just put bacon or celery. <laughs> I'll, I'll eat a celery out of a Bloody Mary, but I don't really, I mean, they're okay. I'll eat like one bean and one olive, but I'm not like, not, it's not my thing. It's delicious. I love that you <laughs> eat that instead of your salad. No. Yeah. The salad is the food my food eats. So yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Welcome to the show. You fit right in. Uh, also this week, I, w I went to Rouse's and I just discovered this new packaged cookie that they have. They are called Love Cookie. And it's out of a bakery in New Orleans. And come to find out that bakery also makes all of Rouse's packaged pies and like their specialty cookies. They make all this, but Love Cookie is like the special division of it. And it's these little tiny packages of cookies. They make them in small batches. I want to say there was maybe like a dozen in the pack and they're about the size of Girl Scout cookies. So they're kind of small and they had a dark chocolate mint. And my boyfriend laughed at me because in the car, I tasted one and I immediately started crying because it was so good. Aww. It's like a classier version of a Girl Scout cookie. And a lot of times when you get chocolate mint cookies, it's either like a lot of chocolate and not a lot of mint. And it's it's just not right. It's not like the Thin Mint. It's not like, you know, the Girl Scout cookie Thin Mint. But this was spot on. And it had like that dark chocolate taste. The best part was the aftertaste of butter. And I think that that's what I liked so much about it. Because so many cookies are not made with butter anymore. They're made with margarine or who knows what. It, especially go flavored butter, yeah, butters packaged you know packaged <laughs> cookies so i think it was the butter that you could taste in the cookie that really did it for me and they have them at rouse's it's called love cookie i went home and immediately researched them they make about 
seven or eight, I want to say, different flavors of cookies. Uh, but the dark chocolate mint is spot on. It was wonderful. It's like a lady scout cookie. Yeah. Not a girl scout. <laughs> okay, we are going to take our first break. And when we come back, uh, we have more with Mickey. So come back to us. It's the Lafayette Food Junkie Show on News Talk 96.5 KPL. The best tasting radio show in all of South Louisiana. It's the Lafayette Food Junkie Show on News Talk 96.5 KPL. Welcome back to the Lafayette Food Junkie Show on News Talk 96.5 KPL. I'm your host, Tiffany Deku, and joining me tonight is Mickey Bear, who is a sommelier in training at Marcella's Wine Market Cafe. Um, okay, so I've been doing this past week, and it's been kind of an ongoing thing, something that I'll put on social media and hashtag it balling on a budget because I think that it's important, you know, if you don't have a lot of money to, to kind of prove if you don't have a lot of money, like you can still do and find cool things to eat and do around Acadiana. So this week on Ballin' on a Budget, just some some things that I kind of came across. Um, with Acadiana uh, Great Harvest, Acadiana Great Harvest, you can become a breadhead. And I think all you have to do is just like sign up to do it and it's free. And they'll send you these different reward points. Well, last week they sent me a reward point for buy a sandwich, get a loaf of bread. Actually, it was buy a sandwich, get a sandwich for free or buy a loaf of bread, get a loaf of bread for free. Well, I went in and asked them if I buy a sandwich or a loaf of bread, can I get the opposite for free? And they said, yes, absolutely. So I bought a sandwich. I got my bread for the week for free. So that's like an example of balling on a budget. I've been following a Katie and a thrifty mom on Facebook and she's been around before I started blogging because I remember uh, we used to talk to each other when I first start. Like, I feel like when I first started blogging, she had like 10,000 followers. Like that's how <laughs> popular she is on social media. Well, lately um, she's been popping up in my newsfeed a lot and she does this thing where she weeds through all the local sales papers for the grocery stores and she puts what her favorite items are at each store for a week and a Facebook post. So it's in one place and it's really nice and helpful. And I've used it two weeks in a row. Like last week she posted Rouse's was having a big meat special and they had these uh, pork roasts for 99 cent a pound. In fact, the lady in front of me when I got to Rouse's bought like eight of them. <laughs> she couldn't even lift. Like she got like a little tiny basket. She couldn't even lift the basket. And she was like, I didn't think they were going to be this heavy. Well, it's a lot of pounds of meat. Like it's a whole slab of pig almost like the skin was still on the roast. Oh, like it was, it was, yeah, it was pretty serious. So I couldn't find it at first. This is a funny story. I couldn't find it first. And then the butcher came out. I was like, where are the roasts that are 99 cents a pound? He was like, oh, this lady just wiped me out. I have to go cut some more up in the back. So he went and cut some more, got it. I think I paid like $6 for a six pound roast. So it was, it was pretty cool. Took it, put it in a crock pot this week, let it cook down, drained out the fat, took the bones out, going to use the fat for a soup stock later on in the year, froze it in the freezer, um, left the skin on because I like the skin and I added barbecue sauce. So I made like a, a barbecued pulled pork in the crock Yum. pot. Super easy, right? And then I just got um, a coleslaw mix from the store because I was being lazy. You can chop your own coleslaw and <laughs> save bunches more money and have 80 pounds of coleslaw if you would like. But I just went to the store and bought the prepackaged already done coleslaw, which was like two bucks, I want to say. And just put apple cider vinegar in it because I wanted real light. I didn't want a mayo based. Um, put some pepper. And then I bought some butter lettuce to make little pulled pork lettuce wraps that oh, I topped cute. with the slaw. <clears throat> I think we paid like maybe 10 bucks and we're going to have like five or six servings from it because the roast was so big and it's like for two people. So super cheap and affordable, totally balling on a budget moment. Now I'm trying to figure out other things that I could do with the pulled pork um, for the rest of the week. I may freeze some of it too. I'm not the biggest fan of freezing leftovers because they don't always work that well when you defrost them and eat them later on. But I'll do it every now and then uh, if I have a lot of leftovers because I, I just I don't like food waste. So I'll, if I have a lot of leftovers, I'll freeze it. But I'm kind of trying to think. Um, we had some polenta. So yeah. I'm thinking that maybe we're going to do like a tamale pie 
with it, like take the polenta and kind of like break it down and put it and put the pork on top and maybe like some cheese and bake it that way and kind of see how that works yeah, out. Yeah, you could do something like that. Yeah, like a so, street taco-ish kind of thing. Right. So we're, we're trying to think of some other, get some, get creative with the rest of the pulled pork that we have. And then the other special that she used this week had shredded cheese for a ridiculous price. So I, I have, and now I was the proud owner of five pounds, <laughs> five packages of shredded cheese. Well, my boyfriend had his kids this weekend, so we made pizzas. So that used a lot of the shredded mozzarella cheese that I use. So I think we made four pizzas and two of those pizzas were gluten-free crust um, for maybe under $20. We were trying to figure out the price of that, which is really affordable. And that was for two adults and three kids. And we had a ball making that. It was super easy just making pizza at home. So, I mean, those are some examples of some stuff that you can do with the, with the sales items. And I was talking to a friend who's very tech uh, suave, and she was telling me about all these apps that you can download on your phone. And you make copies of the receipt and you make money basically from shopping. Like you'll get, there's all these different ones. And she said, I was asking her which one was better. And she said that she actually uses all of them. And so last week when she went grocery shopping, she got like $6 back. And I think they'll send you, you can either get a gift card or they'll send you a $20 check in the mail whenever you make a certain amount, which um, I downloaded all the apps maybe an hour before the radio show started. So in the upcoming episodes, I'm going to be testing them out to kind of see which one's better and what I liked about one and what I didn't like it about another one. But that's another way to save money too. And it's really cool. And it takes, um, a lot of it was like already stuff that's on sale and you, you take it and you buy it and then you just scan your card and you make money from from shopping at the store. So it's kind of cool. That's what we all need, right? To make money shopping. Right. I know. I was like, <laughs> this is my dream come true. I'm making money back from buying groceries. Yes, sign me up. So in the upcoming weeks, I'll be talking a little bit more about those different things. And then also just to give a restaurant a shout out that's doing something, Brodus Burgers today is doing $3 regular or spicy burgers. Um, and I think someone told me you can get fries and a drink with the $3 burger and it's like five bucks. So that's something that's going on today to kind of give them a little bit, little shout out. And then also I want to mention that world foods to go is doing their next pop-up. It's happening October 3rd at Jefferson street pub. And it's going to be Indonesian food themed, which we have not had in Lafayette. Do you know? No, I haven't seen any Indonesian come through yeah. here. I'm very curious about it. I'm not, I don't know what to expect. And I mean, he has the menu up, but I, I don't. A lot of green papaya, yes. I would imagine. <laughs> yeah, I think there's some papaya happening in there, but it's it's around like $35 a ticket. And you can go on Facebook and look up World Foods Pop-Up or World Foods To Go, I think is how it is on Facebook to get more information on that. Okay, we are going to take another break. And when we come back, we're going to be talking with Mickey A. Bear. So come back to us. It's the Lafayette Food Junkie Show on News Talk 96.5 KPL. From Boudin to the best burgers Acadiana has to offer, it's the Lafayette Food Junkie Show on News Talk 96.5 KPL. Welcome back to the Lafayette Food Junkie Show on News Talk 96.5 KPL. I'm your host, Tiffany Deku, and guest co-host tonight is Mickey A. Bear, who is a sommelier in training at Marcello's Wine Market Cafe. Um, I just want to promo. So when we go into the next commercial break, we're going to be doing a giveaway. I have a $25 gift card to the Ro new Romicelli Corrier Farms location. Um, and it'll be the first caller at the commercial break that wins that gift card. So pretty cool. I'm hearing good things about that location too. It's on, it's in Upper Lafayette. So you guys should check it out. Mickey, how... How did you get your, your start? You've had a long history in the in the food industry, correct? Yes. I think this year is going to be, what, my 12th year in the industry. Um, I started off probably hostessing when I was like 16. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, you gradually, you, you drink a lot of wine. You have to. You right. have to know what you're selling to be able to, to pass along what you want people to drink and what you don't want them to have to put into their body. Um, but I would say probably my big inspiration actually came from working at Koshaw and working under um, a sommelier there and getting able to try all the different varieties of things. Like, it, you know, it was like, to me, wine was a Pinot Noir 
and a Cabernet. And that was pretty much all of my right? knowledge. That's kind of where I am. With. And, <laughs> and then you get out there and people are like, well, you should try this. And you're like, wow, okay, all wine doesn't just taste like grape juice. Exactly. There's a little bit more to it. I mean, it's as simple as you want to make it, but it's also amazing. So. So you just took your first test. I did. To do level one. I did. How many levels are there in the sommelier process? There are four. Four. So Ben Leger, who is a well-known sommelier in Lafayette, in fact, for the longest time, he was the only sommelier in Lafayette. When he came on the show, he had just finished taking the test for level three. And we were kind of talking about that there's the, the grand sommelier. The master sommelier. The master sommelier. And we think that he's possibly a master sommelier. So he's like the grand wizard. of Yeah. Like <laughs> he's the grand wizard of sommeliers in Lafayette, we think. But I mean, since, since he's come along, I think when he came on the show, so he was going to do level three, there was two other sommeliers in Lafayette. And then now we have what, about five or six. There's a bunch of them that yeah. I, that I know personally. So I'm, maybe there's more that I haven't gotten around to, but just at Marcello's alone, we have three level ones and a level two. Wow. Y'all are cranking them out over there. Yeah, we're just like, you know what? We're the wine market. It makes sense because y'all have, y'all, I mean, Marcellus has an actual wine market with a very knowledgeable staff. So exactly. um, it makes perfect sense that uh, all these sommeliers would be coming out of there. Why do you think Lafayette's getting so many? Do you think we're, we're moving on up and people are getting more sophisticated about wine in Lafayette? I mean, I think we've always been sophisticated with wine. It's just, you know. Now we're getting a pin for it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Now, now you're getting the street cred yeah. that you are. You do know what you're talking about. Okay, so maybe we should explain for anyone who's listening who does not know what a sommelier is, what a sommelier is. Uh, it's a wine and spirits expert. And I think all the way down to like even cigars, like things that you enjoy with food that you'd, you'd pair with food. So, so you can do all of it. You're supposed to be able to do all of it. Yeah, you're getting there. You're getting there. Um, A while back on Instagram, I was doing something called reviewing $5 wines so you don't have to. And I was kind of picking wines that were $5 and under and kind of giving my opinions about them, which you and I were talking about this before the show. I'm not the most knowledgeable about wines. I don't really pick up on a lot of the things that you're supposed to taste. I just know how the wine makes me feel, whether I like it or not. And the the bitterness, which is tannins, if you want to be specific, um, how they taste on the, on the tongue. Um, I was asking your opinion of $5 wines and you're kind of, you we're like, what's a $5 wine? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do they make those? Like- they do. <laughs> they do. Um, maybe they were on sale. And in fact, I think some of them were on sale. Okay. So one of my favorite ones is, uh, it's a brand of Robert Mondavi. Okay. It's a $5 wine and it's, it's pretty decent. I mean, he's been making wine for a long time. He should know what he's doing by now, right? Right. Yeah. <laughs> so that's, he makes like an $11 one and a $5 one and I get the $5 one and, and I, and I, and I'm, I'm a fan of it. Uh, there's a $5 wine that I can never remember the name of. I just know that it has a tree on the cover um, at Whole Foods that I'm rather fond of too. That's that's a decent wine. And um, there are $2 bottles of wines out there and we'll talk about those a little later. I think that's called Boone's Farm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that I'm actually uh, a fan of too. So, I mean, what are your thoughts on the different price points of wine? I almost feel like, you know, price is almost not an, an option. You like what you like. It, it all comes down to, like you said, the way it makes you feel. It can be as simple as you want and it can be as complicated as you'd like it to be. It's just supposed to make you feel happy. And I feel like, you know, taste is, is almost secondary. If right. You're feeling good, right? <laughs> so I got it. I invested in an aerator a while back and you can explain to us what an aerator is. And I feel like, especially with the $1.99 wines. Okay. So when, what I'm saying with that, so Walmart has this brand called Oak Leaf. Uh, that's a well-known $1.99 brand and it tastes kind of horrible uh, <laughs> without <laughs> being aerated. But if you use the aerator, I find it to be a little more, it brings it up to a, maybe a five or a $10 it's bottle. It's a $5 wine now, yeah, right? Yeah, $5 <laughs> wine after, after the aerator. So explain what an aerator does um, if you like them or not. And I, I mean, I feel like it depends on the wine that you're doing. If it was like an old 1955 Bordeaux, like I don't know that I would put it through an aerator. I'd probably decant it and let it sit. Um, but an aerator just speeds up the um, the process of like letting that wine breathe. It, it incorporates oxygen into the wine itself, which is why you swirl the glass, which is why you see people doing that grandma kiss of like 
you sucking up all this yeah. <laughs> wine in your mouth. Um, it, it just does all that for you. So you could, if you don't essentially have one, if you open the bottle and take the first sip, let it sit for 30 minutes and take another sip of it, it will have evolved yeah, dramatically. Yeah, we were talking about that too. I'll find with some wines that if I just open the bottle and let it sit on the counter too, it kind of aerates it as exactly. well. And the one that I got, it was like $20. It was really affordable and it goes on the on the bottle itself and you just like flip it. You have to completely flip <laughs> over the bottle. Like it has to be completely straight. And it kind of just like swirls the wine around. And I find that it makes a difference, but I don't know how psychological that is. No, I mean, you can not. taste it. You can taste it. If you would try the wine prior to you doing it and then do it after you've aerated it, you, you notice something about it. So you're saying older bottles of wine, you should decant and explain what that is too. Uh, decanting would mean that you pour it out of the bottle into um, it. And they have these really fancy decanters where like, like, like swans or whatever. You pour it into a glass vessel and let the 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 air do its its thing on the side of the so glass. So it's basically like a giant version of an aerator. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, the aerator does speed up the process dramatically, but the decanter does what it's supposed to do. You know, decants the wine. Yeah. So Rosé has been really big this year and Bon Appetit recently on one of their recent po podcasts kind of said they were over Rosé. And I was like, <gasps> what are you talking about? It's my favorite thing. Um, I like it because it feels like I'm drinking a glass, a bouquet of flowers um, what are your thoughts on rosé? I love rosé and I feel like those people that uh, did the Bon Appetit article probably don't live in Louisiana where it's super hot and humid. Right? <laughs> I cannot drink red wine in the summer. It is so hot. It is way too hot to drink all those big heavy wines. I and just started drinking red wine again because it's September. So it was like pumpkin spice latte. I was like, time red for reds. Wine. Yeah, time for, <laughs> time for reds. No, I like the rosés and you know, when it's crawfish season, what goes better with uh, crawfish than rosé? What? I'm going to have to try that. <laughs> I recently found this year two sparkling rosés, which I absolutely adore. They Wait. are so great. I There's different ones out there. I went to a Spanish wine dinner in March and they had a Spanish rosé that was there and I really liked it. And it's I think it retailed for around $13. I feel like the rosés are around Yeah, they're $10. like 20 and under. And I had a, a Cote de Provence. Uh, my favorite yeah that i had been dying to try but i didn't want to pay 30 dollars for a bottle of it um at when i went to a restaurant in new orleans recently and it was really nice too again it's just like you're it's drinking crisp. a glass of i feel like i'm drinking a glass of flowers and that's why i like it it's so I'm ladylike yeah, yeah. <laughs> it is it is it's very it's a very lady wine but i mean if, if you're a guy that's that's really into wine i think it's totally okay for well, that's you to drink super that comfortable too. yeah yeah <laughs> totally <laughs> what are some of your uh, favorite affordable brands that are out there brands um i don't know um i like the sky we have it at the shop um it's corvina it's something that's typically more of a blended wine but uh, in this case it's by itself uh, it's an italian varietal out of veneto and um it's good. I would say in place of like your Pinot Noir, you should try it. Like it's, I want to say it's about like $11 if you buy it at the shop. Super cheap, super affordable. Uh, my other one is a, a white that we do all the time and it's the Domaine de Pac. And um, you can only get this specific bottle at the shop at Marcello's on Johnson Street. So again, $11, you really can't beat it. I'm finding that I'm seeing a lot more blended wines yeah. too. I was telling you that... Rouse has had a wine on special this past week. It was seven ninety nine, and it was a Malbec and a, a Cab blend. And you were like, yeah, you know, that's really common. Why do you think that blending wines has become so popular? Uh, well, I feel like it's for, you know, it, it it's easy for somebody that's in a large group of people that you're like, oh, well, I want a Malbec, but I want a Cab and I want a Pinot. And if you just throw them all into one bottle, you kind of meet everybody's needs. Uh, but it's also maybe the the maker of the wine maybe the Malbec wasn't up to like their standards for the year. So if they blended it, it like helps that wine. And so it tastes a little bit better and it smooths over. Well, that's kind of smart too. Some of their imperfections and they make a profit off of it and we all love it. So we drink it. <laughs> right. I felt like it was also a way to maybe make the wine a little more palatable to certain people and maybe a little more sweeter when you mix the different kinds of wines. Yeah, I feel like they've been missing wines for a long time, but I feel like maybe in California, that was their new thing. Is to, you know, bring all Doing these that. cool, yeah, like conundrum, like everybody does conundrum and that's like a blend of all kinds of stuff that you probably wouldn't see by itself. So, 
If someone wants to get into drinking wines, where should they start? By buying a bottle. Like, yeah, and opening it up. That's what <laughs> yeah. she said before the show. That's all you need to do. It's it's just meant to be, you know, enjoyed. And I guess the job of a sommelier is to guide you along the right path of, oh, well, I've had this and I really enjoy this. And, you know, maybe as our job is to say, well, you like that? Let's try something else that I think you might like. And if you don't like it, I'll drink it. So... <laughs> So you guys at Marcello's Wine Market Cafe are about to start a happy hour, um, which when I posted about it today, I said after adult after school special. And the reason why I said that is because I think y'all had like an adult grilled cheese on on the menu. I think they did. Well, yeah, the after school special is grilled cheese with prosciutto and tomato basil soup. So you really can't beat that in like half price wine. Half price cocktails? Come on, that's a steal. Y'all's antipasta board, antipasta <gasps> board is pretty awesome too. It's one of the better ones in Lafayette. It's so beautiful. It's like what overflowing. What goes better with wine than cheese and meat? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. There's been like a rotation of different pickles that they've been putting on lately, and different compotes and tapenades, and so they switch it up every I time mean, you come in. It'll be different. Y'all have great desserts over there too. Oh, I'm, oh my God. I'm a kind of a big fan of your desserts. Wait, which one? Um, I really liked, I'm blanking on the name, always do. It's almost like a chocolate mousse. Oh yeah, the crema chocolata. Yes. It was, it, very was good. it was really good. And then I think one time I ate there and on the menu they had pork cheeks and they were pretty awesome. Pork too. cheeks are always on the menu for oh, lunch are they? and for dinner now. Okay. And it's so good. They melt in your mouth. They're delicious. And then I also, I was seeing you guys are well known for your mac and cheese and it's on the af- the happy hour menu as it well. It is now. And it's so good with lobster or fried chicken on top. You can make it a whole thing because who doesn't like mac and cheese? Right. <laughs> who doesn't like mac and cheese? Um, and then you're doing half price wines and beer by the glass. Yes. They're doing a happy hour thing. So everything that we have uh, on the menu is going to be half price between two and five. So nice. I also love, I went there one time and I, it was the night after a night of heavy drinking and I was like, I'm not drinking. And they made me a mocktail. They made me like a lemon berry martini, lemon basil martini without the alcohol. And it was awesome refreshing yeah it was so i look i really appreciated that y'all did that and it made me tell people you know if you're not drinking just ask and sometimes you know the restaurant will make you yeah we will make magic happen for you make magic happen (laughs) okay we are going to take another break and when we come back we have more with mickey a bear but first if you guys want a chance to win this 25 dollar gift card to romicelli courier farms call in at 232 one five four two and first caller wins the this twenty five dollar gift card. So come back to us. It's the Lafayette Food Junkie Show on Newstalk ninety six five KPL. And now we talk about food. It's the Lafayette Food Junkie Show on Newstalk ninety six five KPL. Welcome back to the Lafayette Food Junkie Show on Newstalk 96.5 KPEL. I'm your host, Tiffany Deku, and we've been talking with Mika Bear, who is a sommelier in training at Marcella's Wine Market Cafe. And we have a winner for the $25 gift card to Romicelli at Corey Farms. It's Morgan Tremamont. Um, so congratulations, and I hope you enjoy your meal at Romicelli. I'm a big fan of their hummus and their homemade bread, so hope you enjoy it. All right, so we've been talking with Mickey, and we were talking about the show. I was I was not a hundred percent sure on this, and so I got your clarification on it that there were not a lot of women sommeliers out there, and you said that that was in fact correct. That there's probably about two hundred and fifty one master sommeliers yeah. and only about 21 of those are women. Yeah, it's something and, like ridiculous like that. And so now we have two that are coming out of Marcello. So why do you think that there is a rise in women uh, out there doing this? Why wouldn't there be? Yeah. <laughs> do you think it's... Well, because I mean, it's an, it's a it's a trend in the, in the culinary world in a, as a whole that we're getting more female executive chefs um, in Lafayette, especially, you know, we're getting more here, getting female sommeliers. We're getting women enthusiasts, whiskey enthusiasts out there. Why? I mean, why do you think that it took so long for, for this trend to kind of start? I don't know if it's necessarily like a gender thing or if it's just more personality related. You Right. Yeah. Like, you know, sometimes people click with certain people, but I almost, I honestly feel that 
you have the the correct personality and the correct drive to do so because they say that master som test is one of the hardest tests in the world to do right there's no classes on it you do the research yourself you go in and you're put in front of a panel of people that know exactly what they're talking about and they run you through the ringer you that's gonna to, be terrifying it's it's so terrifying i didn't even have to do a service exam for it but watching them makes you nervous and so I don't know. One of the master psalms before our last um, part of the exam uh, said something that, you know, makes you think that what you do is validated. I guess maybe a lot of people think that being in the hospitality industry is is not this glamorous thing or that you're not doing anything to contribute to society. Um, but you are able to change somebody's life for those two hours that they're in the restaurant and do it for the benefit of those people that maybe are having a terrible day. And it's, it's a nice feeling to be able to pass that along. So exactly. I don't know if it's maybe now that women are just, you know, we're going back to our roots of like nurturing caregivers that it's happening. I don't know. <laughs> so you brought two bottles of wine, a red and a white for us to try in studio. And these are available at Marcello's. So tell us about these wines that you brought. Uh, I think I mentioned them earlier. The Skaya is the Corvina. Um, Corvina is typically a blended grape in Amarone's and Valpolicella Repasso's. Um, and Amarone's, they're typically a dried grape. Uh, but this Corvina is lovely. It's really nice to drink, I would say, this time of year. Um, you were asking me, so I was, we, we talked about this, that I, I don't really taste a lot of the fruit notes that you're supposed to taste when you're tasting wine. But the white one, you were like, what what fruits are you tasting? And I was like, I have no idea. And, <laughs> and then you said grapefruit, grapefruit and, pear. and pear. And as soon as you said that, the the grapefruit, I totally taste it now. It's like a citrus explosion. It's it's wonderful. It's nice. I feel like that one would make a good sangria. Um, that's just me though. But uh, like white sangria, yeah, delicious. like a white sangria. And I, I mean, I love the red. But I, I'm a girl who loves red wines. So and they, they're really smooth and light. Too. They're, they're easy not to super drink. Heavy. Yeah. Cab. A lot of times when I'm at this point, my face will be beet red and I'll be sweating. So I'm not sweating. <laughs> so these are wonderful uh, summer wines for our Louisiana temperatures that we have here. I know. Poor us. How long should you keep a bottle of wine? Like once it's open, how long is it good for? Uh, I would say two to three days, depending on how you store it. Um, if you do store it correctly, we, you know, there's things that you can buy that you pump the air out of the wine. And I feel like it keeps it a little bit longer. Uh, but in my case, I feel like when red wine goes a little bit bad, um, I mix it with Coke and I put it on ice. <laughs> I know. You told me that before the show. And I was telling you, when I drink red wine, when when it's open, like the first glass, I like it warm. But the rest of the time, I like to put it in the fridge. I like it to get kind of cold. And I have like a just like a basic topper to go on it. And I'll keep it maybe three days. Like after three days, I'm like done. I, I can't drink anymore. I've become a fan of the little, almost little tiny box wines that you can find that have oh, like yeah, the yeah, screw yeah. Ta top that like you can screw it back. I've become a fan of those because it's, they're more affordable and it's got maybe three glasses for me. So, cause I don't drink like a whole bottle at a time. I'll drink like a one, I'm a one glass a night girl so it, it kind of works better for me so I don't have to waste any wine well yeah and then when it's in the box like that it doesn't oxidize like it would you know you were talking about the white wine had a cap a, or yeah, no, it's a, a red no the the, uh, the red wine has it's a vino closure uh, it's a vino lock it's a glass stopper that comes on top of it as opposed to um, a cork or a screw top the stelvin closures um, and you can reuse it. <laughs> right. I mean, talking about saving wines and getting them to stay longer, a top like that would work way better than a cork. I would say, yeah, definitely would work way better than the cork because it's got this little like plastic rubbery coating at the top of it that kind of, it sticks. It'll make like a clicking noise. So I, one of the wine, one of the $5 wines that I got had a, a, a reusable cork top. It had like this plastic top. It was, it was, it was labeled an eco-friendly wine and I found that that wine lasted five days in the fridge with that, just that the kind of top that it had on it. Um, and you, you said, you know, they're, they're going more to those types of tops. Yeah. So cork is just a, like a romantic thing at this point. Just like, to kind of get the pop at the table. Yeah. It's, it's like, Ooh, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like we're all used to seeing wine like that. Like it's not super amazing when your, your server or your sommelier walks up to the table and unscrews a bottle. Right. <laughs> Um, but it does make, you know, they're losing less wine because of it. So, and I, I, I guess I kind of 
feel like that too. Like it, <laughs> it has this connotation that if it has a screw top, that it's a less quality wine and that's kind of changing. So you kind of have to stop that mentality and yeah. be like, no, you're actually saving money by using the screw top. Exactly. It's just, you know, the winemakers aren't losing bottles because of bad corks or oxidation problems. Uh, so it's just, you know, we're moving forward. It's 2016. <laughs> so, okay. Speaking of trends as well with wine, the the canned wine has become this this trend. I I've the beer garden downtown serves the, the canned wine. I saw it at Rouse's, and then I think Bread and Circus also has a rosé canned wine. What do you think about the canned wines? Oh, I don't know. If you, you haven't would. had a good experience <laughs> with them. I feel like if I were homeless, I would love canned wine, but. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. To me, like if I wanted to drink the inside of metal or lick a can, I'd just do it, right? Yeah. So they do. I haven't had them. So it kind of does give it this metallic taste. To the I, I mean, it might be like all in my mind, but to me, I taste it. I wonder if they sell it because I just saw the single cans. I wonder if they sell it like a six pack, like a beer. Six pack of wine. That sounds like a great idea. Yeah. <laughs> well, they have the Sutter Farms that come in like they, they have the little tiny bottles and they have like a little four pack. I could probably get away with that, but I don't yeah. know. Something about drinking wine out of a can. Now, I will say that the beer garden also has wine on tap. I haven't to, experienced the wine on tap. You were talking about this new thing that they have now that it's it's got like this little yeah, it's you don't like have a to un, yeah you, you don't, don't have to, have to un, yeah you don't uncork the bottle you basically take this needle that attaches onto the top of the bottle and um it sort of doesn't penetrate and then you can pump as much wine out as you want without oxidizing the wine it's kind of cool it looks neat I, I mean, I think that it's got to be more cost effective for restaurants too because I mean if you're selling a wine by the glass and you're opening a bottle of wine, you know, yeah, it'll go bad. Like how, how quickly do you have to then sell the next bottle of wine? Like to, you know, to make up for the, <laughs> for the cost of that. Yeah. I think that it's something that perhaps when that thing uh, comes around, I don't know how expensive it is for that new, um, wine pump. Um, but I imagine that when it's first out, it's, well, it's probably more than we want to spend on something like that. But I think when it becomes more affordable, we will all have one. <laughs> You mentioned crawfish and rosé pairing yeah. nicely together. What has been like your most crazy at home, maybe mashup of food and wine and it worked together for you? Oh, I don't know. Um, I was talking about that earlier today was that lace potato chips and champagne are like the best thing ever. What? <laughs> Tell me more about this. It's plain lace potato chips, the yellow bag. <laughs> And champagne, literally. Any particular brand of champagne? Uh, I would or? say, you know, specifically France. Um, I, I'm, I'm a sucker for old world, so I probably always go that way. But it is so good. The salt with the bubbles. I mean, champagne really goes with everything, but it is really, really good with Lay's potato chips. This is good to know. <laughs> what about wines with boudin pairings? With a boudin pairing? I would say that it's, you know, it would depend on the spice level of what you have. Okay, um, so a super spicy boudin, what would you pair that with? Um, I would probably do like a Riesling with it. Oh, okay, so a nice cooling off factor of yeah, that. Yeah, okay. you want to match what you have. What about a smoky boudin? Oh, I'd just go whiskey at that point or rye. <laughs> yes, I agree <laughs> so much with that. What about a pepper jack boudin ball? A pepper jack boudin ball? I don't know that I've had one of those. What? I feel like I'm missing out. Like the reactions I'm getting from y'all, I feel like I'm missing out in life right now. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. You need to try it. I'll have to look into it. You'll okay, have to let so me know. We, we'll have to to be on hold on what would pair nicely with that. Yeah, I'll have to write you back on that one. What about gumbo? Gumbo. Um, again, I feel like that's 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 more or less if you do like smoked sausage versus fresh sausage, and if you're doing seafood versus chicken and sausage gumbo okay so chicken and sausage chicken and sausage that's my favorite um probably i would probably actually do um maybe like chateau neuf du pop i think i would like something out of the rhone valley um but i do feel like you could get away with like a california merlot and be okay with it and what about a seafood 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 i would um it's a little bit more difficult because of the okra i feel like the okra yeah kind of whether it had me. okra or not yeah, if you wanted to do white, I would maybe say like Sauvignon Blanc would be like good, something from like New Zealand. And then um, if you were looking to do red, uh, I probably would do something like like a Nero Diavola. 
I always drink red wines with gumbo. Like I just it because to me it's like winter and yeah. like the red, like the wind, like a cab. Like that's that's how I do it. How do you feel about? Um, we're running out of time, but um, the old mentality of like white with chicken, red with red meat. How, how do you feel about? Do you think that those still hold true to the to this in this day and age? Some of them do. Like you know, I don't know that I'd ever do like red meat with white wine, like a big steak, just because I feel like you would just lose. You want to match whatever flavor you're doing with with your wine. This is the same. Um, but I do feel like you can do fish with red wine, believe it or not. It, yeah. I mean, it can't be have like a heavy tannic because it'll it'll change the way your fish tastes. It'll make it metallic. So something like a Beaujolais would be good or oh, okay, like a light yeah. Pinot Noir with fish. It's fine. And your thoughts on dessert wines? They're delicious. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who doesn't like dessert wine? Yeah, they're super sweet. I can't drink them anymore. <laughs> I, I mean, I can't do a whole bunch of it, yeah. but it is good when when done right. I like sherry. Sherry is something you should look into. Uh, we talked about sherry a lot on last week's show. Thank you so much for coming on tonight, Mickey. Thank you for having me. I had a good time here. All right. That's our show. Thank you so much for tuning in. Join us next week at 6 p.m. This is Tiffany Deku on News Talk 96.5 KPL, and this is the Lafayette Food Junkie Show. Thanks for listening, and as always, happy eating, Acadiana.